All right, good evening and welcome to our first socially distanced Keating Roofing Friday Night Rivals full program. What a night. It's so 2020. Let's start with the traditional rivalry that's never been played in week one. And, and forget about the rain, Greg. What a night. What a night, Scotty. How does it get any weirder than this or more 2020 than this? But when you got Stratford and Somerville on what would be John McKissick's 94th birthday playing on John McKissick Field with a twist for the first time in nearly 70 years. It's a Somerville team that's going to be coached by somebody not in the McKissick bloodline. Incredible. Yeah, it's Ian Rafferty's show now, and he says they will honor Coach McKissick every single day. Well, this game starts at 9.30, so we don't have a whole lot of highlights from this game, but we've got some highlights from this game. And that look at freshman. this right now. That is how they had to get the field ready, just squeegeeing it. Christian Graham, though, breaks off the big touchdown right there for the green wave. Nicely done, sir. They are up six to nothing. Colby Shirey then going to come back with a nice long run for Somerville. This guy is an experienced quarterback for the wave. He knows what he's doing, but everything is fair game in that type of field condition. As for Stratford, they get it going just before the half. They do get a touchdown from Jaden Martino. It is 7-6 Stratford at the half. This game about to start the second half on our sister station, My TV Charleston. All right, extremely trying first camp for Shane Fiddler at Ashley Ridge. Right out of the gate, the team suffers tragedy, losing one of the most popular and loved players in town, Amari President. They honor him with helmet stickers this year. Tonight, they open with Fort Dorchester, arguably the toughest test on the field in our area. A whole lot of rain, a whole lot of lightning in Flower Town tonight. This one is not able to be played. They will make it up tomorrow night at 5.30 in the evening. And we'll be back right after the break. Greg will have highlights of Wando and Kane Bay. Stay with us. Welcome back to Friday Night Rivals. It's the start of something new. Joe Call leaving Somerville after all these years for a new challenge, new beginning, and a new town taking over a powerhouse in Oceanside that was left by Chad Greer, already greeted with a prank today. Well, somebody thought it was funny to put the Somerville pads on the goalpost for this evening's game. Oceanside at what will be their new rival, Bishop England, and the rivalry beginning before the first game begins. First 3A game for the Land Sharks after making the lower state finals in 2A a year ago. Bishop ball first quarter. Eddie Marinero cannot handle it. He's recovering the fumble, but he's taken down by Dana Brunson. End of the first quarter. Vaughn Blue gets the carry as the horn sounds, and he is in for the seven yard touchdown, making it sent zip OCA. You know, Coach Call loves that. It's also the last play of the night. Lightning delay, like we've seen all across the area. Calls it. Both sides decide to push the game back and resume action at 5.30 p.m. 14-10 nothing in the second quarter. The Bobcats try to respond as Nate Hoyt finds Kylan Simmons. He's going to turn on the Jets. This is a big game. However, Bluffton was unable to score on the drive. Possession still trailing. He is there to pick it off. And after a flag was thrown, Colleton would take Oak over on the 10-yard line. The Cougars up 14-0 at the half after this play finally ends. Bobcats were looking to dial up the offense to kick off the kickoff to midfield. However, the Cougars defense just too much for this Bobcats team in this game. Colleton is gonna walk away from this one, building off the momentum they had at the Jamborees last week. A 28-7 victory to open the season. A very long time in the making, Scotty. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Years of planning, $22 million of funding. It is now here. It is gorgeous. The new Charleston County shared North Charleston Stadium on the corner of Montague and Dorchester. It really is stunning. 6,000 seats, and they open it up tonight. First game ever, cross and military magnet. And look at that absolute beauty of a field right there. Artificial turf could certainly use it tonight. Very first cross cross they enjoy the opener some running right there nifty moves Kylie green short yardage touchdown cross up eight nothing in the first Santori Jones then with a touchdown that puts the Trojans up 14 nothing this game went into a rain delay 
Rain delay, they are still going right now. Cross was up big at last check. How about Philip Simmons and Burke over to Ravenel Stadium tonight in West Ashley opening drive. Philip Simmons marches into territory. Trip Williams throws one to bleed right, bleed right there. Then a few drives later, Iron Horses strike again. Trip Williams floats one down the middle. This time it's Will Ramey. Iron Horses up 14-0. That is the score just before halftime. About three minutes left in the first half game. Fourth game, 14 nothing. They will pick it up tomorrow at noon, right there at Ravenel Stadium. Well, let's talk about a couple other scores to pass along tonight. Well, a lot of them were canceled tonight. West Ashley and Stoll, they did not get to play tonight. They will play tomorrow at 6 o'clock. We'll keep updating you with games that are going to be played tomorrow. One of them as well, Goose Creek and Berkeley. That game will be moved to 6.30 on Monday evening. We'll be back right after the break. Back to Friday Night Rivals, let's show you another one of the high school league games that was going on late, just finishing moments ago. Kane Bay and Wando, they had a long lightning delay here, but they decide to continue this one tonight in Mount Pleasant as those delays got in the way. But when we pick things up, Rocco Adrian's debut as Wando interim head coach is going well, but with his Warriors up 11 in the third, DeAndre Smith gets the sack, trying to get his Cobras going. But when Kane Bay gets the ball, Colin Bryant, Brian Rudehaver, well, they come in on the big time run stop and they're pumped. End of the third with seconds to go. Braden Pitchard hits Peter Varsdell. What a long TD there on the far sideline. Makes it 28 to 10. Wando goes on their way to a 35-10 victory. A crazy night, a crazy opener. Made with James Island as well. Uh, Trojans getting... Trojans are going for points. May River, they can, they can, but this one is all May River. Here's Jaden Jones going to find an opening, and Jaden Jones gains 32 yards on this one, and it's a nice win for May River. They beat James Island tonight. 28 is the final from over there at the backyard. All right, let's talk a little skis of football. First Baptist has mowed past everyone in their way this year. Ending, ending undefeated start to the season. Tonight, they welcome another undefeated team in Augusta Christian. Let's head over to James Island for this one. And Augusta Christian is very solid. We are going to head out there for some ball game. And Zach Blackwell carries about 13 yards and breaks a couple tackles right here. This one just dodging defenders just like they're dodging rain in the game will daniel big week for him turned 18 this week this guy is a legitimate college prospect no doubt about it son of jim daniel hits jalen hayward this is a huge 72 yard touchdown for the first baptist hurricanes nicely done right there first baptist is going to take charge in this game jed bradford for augusta christian tries to get it to tristan trent he fumbles on the play caleb washington right there for the first baptist recovery augusta christian is not backing down. Second quarter, Bradford gets it to Terrence Vandiver for a beautiful touchdown. 23-21, First Baptist has the lead. This one is called for lightning. No decision when they will finish the rest of this game. Porter Goud at Heathwood Hall tonight in Columbia. Let's head up to the Midlands for this one. It's been a struggle so far this season for Porter Goud. It continues to be a struggle for them tonight. Heathwood Hall all over the Cyclones in this one. 41-13 is the final score from the Midlands. Greg, I will send it over to you to head down to Hilton Head Island. Yes, here we are, the Hilton Head Christian Academy. Eagles looking to stay as cool as the other side of the pillow. I see what our script writer put in there as they hosted Colleton Prep. The Warhawks were looking to make a statement early on, but they turned the ball over to the Eagles, and the Eagles offense would take it over. J.P. Paduzzi going to keep it. And get the big gain. A couple plays later, Paduzzi hands it off to Jace Blackshear. He finds the end zone, secures the bag. The Warhawks look to respond, but Riley Shin, not about to let that happen. He takes the pick all the way down to the red zone. And then J.P. Paduzzi would toy around with the defense before the off-balance throw to Blackshear for the touchdown. Eagles win this one big, 45-20.